Hey, we're back because it's time for voiceover body shop or VO BS. And our guest this week, David H. Lawrence the Seventeenth. Wave to him, David. There you go. We got lots of great stuff tonight. We're gonna talk with David. We're gonna talk a little bit of tech, and we're just gonna have a great time. Thanks for joining us here on our show. We'll be right with you right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Although we said that earlier, didn't we? We'll be doing it again. Remix. Well, that's what you got to do. Well, I got new glasses. Oh, no. And it's like, you know. I immediately, I sent you a Mr. Magoo gif. Yes. That when you was, told me that. <laughs> oh, Magoo, you've done it again. <laughs> Roar <laughs> on. <laughs> Freaking but, but okay. yeah. But uh, tonight, we've got all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, David H. Lawrence will be joining us in just a sec. And uh, if you've got a question for him or... A tech question for us, throw it in the chat room right now, as opposed to a half hour from now, because then we'll probably just miss it somewhere along the line. Yeah, because David's coming up here in just a second. Now's the time to get your questions in. Right. Uh, and we've got lots of cool tech stuff to talk about as well. So, without further ado, we need to introduce our guest, uh, actor, voice talent, internet entrepreneur, podcaster, demo producer, teacher, and author, best known for his role as the Puppet Master, on uh, NBC's sci-fi series Heroes. David H. Lawrence is always a pleasure to have on our show. He's been preaching the gospel of how to have a successful voiceover career with his voiceover training company, VO2GoGo.com. Let's take a little bit of look, a look at uh, some of the stuff that he does voice-wise. The Heroes season finale, next on NBC. Tonight... <laughs> On CBS News at 11, it's a dangerous job guarding the worst of the worst. Hardcore convicts in an overcrowded prison, and it's even tougher if you're a woman. How dangerous is it here? Now, in a CBS2 News exclusive, Laura Diaz takes you inside this maximum security facility to show you the incredible courage of these guards as they watch over the state's most dangerous criminals. Life don't mean nothing in here. Female prison guards, tonight at 11. Ah! Warning. The following will freak your mind. How many times can you cheat death and survive? An all new season. Chris Angel Mind Freak premieres Tuesday, June 5th at 10 on AE. Here we go, this is it. David H. Lawrence, the 17th, everybody. Hey, how's it going? I took my glasses off because 
can't see anything now. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect because we're sitting that close to us. It's really no, really no. Better off. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna apologize for the the omelet I had for lunch right now. Don't worry about it because this is uncomfortably close. This, this is, is like very cozy. This is very mannish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we used to. It used to be a little wider shot, but yeah, this is. It, it's better doing this great. way. great. That's good. It's doing great. Well, all right. Well, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I was on set all day today and in studio for part of the day. It was fun. It's a great. It, you know, if you'd told me when I was a kid and really, really, really wanted to be a fireman mm-hmm. and an astronaut and sheriff. That this is what I was going to be doing, Acting. I'd be like, "What? <laughs> I don't want to do that," you know. But now, man, I'm so happy I didn't become a sheriff for a fireman or an astronaut. I get to play the Montel. Exactly. I, exactly. That's so. right. Well, great. And so, and you're doing a lot of different stuff, which is really, really cool. Yeah. But let me start off with this because George and I get this question all the time, like maybe two, three times a day, and you probably do as well. Okay. And especially as a trainer, you know, we get the how do you start in voiceover question a lot from people? So how do you answer that simply? So I think the biggest hurdle that people have in getting started is actually not deciding that they want to get started, but taking that first tiny step to doing it. And then once they've done that, take another. The mm-hmm. other, the next one, that second step is the hardest. The first one's like, oh, I've decided this is what I'm going to do. Let me check that off the, uh, the the bucket list. Right. Right? But, and, and I also think people take the uh, step in the wrong direction most of the time. They go, what do I need for equipment? <laughs> they go right to what do I need for equipment. Right. They write us. Yeah. yeah. And then they spend like $8,000 that they shouldn't have spent to begin oh, with. Over and time. yeah. But, you know, at some point. You know, you could spend that kind of money if you want to do that. Um, I think it's deciding that storytelling is something you want to spend your life doing. And some people can't really put that into words. So, uh, you know, the the getting started part, because there's so much low-hanging fruit in our business, there's so many changes that have happened over the years where you don't have to worry about somebody else deciding that you can do this. You can do this on your own. You're an entrepreneur. You're yeah. a business person. It's yeah. not the same as like uh, my agent to call my agent. Somewhere. Exactly. But a lot of people think that's where they want to end up. Right. You know. So, uh, but I think getting started is just making the decision that this is something that really appeals to you. This is something you want to do. This is something that's going to make you happy. And then going about the process of getting the right training for it, and getting a reasonable quality first mic, and taking it to that point and then after that deciding whether or not this is really and truly what you want to do right it reminds me of an old uh thing from a live from off center which was this awesome pbs series that was on at night it was all really odd short videos mm-hmm. and there was one about how do i know if i have an aptitude for photography <laughs> and he, it's very funny so how does you how do you know you have an aptitude an aptitude Maybe that's the first step. You should be able to say aptitude. And you should but be able to you know what you, aptitude means. Yes. How do you know you have an aptitude for Do you have over? any talent, I think? Is, <laughs> yeah. How, do, how long does it take to decide that? I well, mean, how do you know? I, I, you know, I don't know that you can actually quantify that, you know, because yeah. that's like a yes, I do or no, I don't question. Yeah. And, you know, we know among the, the people that have been doing this for a while, we know plenty of people who, if they were isolated from the voiceover population... And somebody said to some disinterested third party, is this person somebody who could do voiceover? I'm looking at you, Wally Cox. Uh, You know, the answer would be uh, no, no. But the thing is, voices across the spectrum are usually in demand. It isn't, you know, most people go... Well, you know, I've been told I have a very, very lovely voice on the phone. Heard that a lot on that's elevators. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Uh, or my kids really like the character voices I come up with. I think I'm going to do animation. Mm-hmm. By the way, my kid hates it when I do that. <laughs> She's like, Dad, do your own voice. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I don't. I think it's kind of hard to predict whether or not you're, you have a, an aptitude for voiceover based on what you know in the beginning. It's kind of the knowledge that you acquire over time that tells you whether or not you have maybe not the just the aptitude for it, but the stomach for it. Right. Because it is a hard business to try and sell to your friends and family 
Oh, really? You're a voiceover talent? I'm still trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the idea, I just I just did a video on this the other day. I'm doing this this challenge this year where I'm doing a new video every day. And I just did a video the other day that I'm, is going to air in a couple of days on the equivalent of what you could have done if you went to work on an hourly basis. Like, Oh, what wow. what yeah. makes wow. sense for an entrepreneur? Now, do you know what that is? That's a that's a harsh dose so of reality. For that's every hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> at a thirty three percent tax rate, because you got corporate tax to pay yep. if you're an entrepreneur and everything, right. you got to make thirty five dollars an hour to make a right. hundred thousand okay. dollars and a full right? and a full work week. And work yeah. Week. yeah, and this is thirty five dollars an hour, not just doing the work, but finding the work. Training for the work, getting the tools to do the work, collecting for the work, billing for the work, promoting the work, finding a team to help you do the work better. You know, like all of these things that you usually don't have to do when you go work for a company that will pay for all that for you. I mean, it just becomes this math problem that's hard to solve. Yeah. So yeah. aptitude, I don't know. Yeah. My wife gives me that one every day. Yeah. I, I you got to work be time management, work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. Those those sorts of things. Yeah, and some people just aren't cut out for it, you know? That's why a lot of people that come out of radio and go into voiceover uh have a learning curve because in radio you're kind of coddled, right? You get right. free food. You get to go to all the concerts. Sometimes you free food. Yeah, yeah sure, all the time. Free food. Um, you well, know, look at where you in. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, it a lot of it's done for you. I mean, I don't know what big companies you work for. I work for ABC Cap Cities. I work for Clear Channel. I work for Nationwide back in the day. I work for you know Cox, and you're you're working for a big company and so you have benefits and you have you know a union and work hours and all this stuff and it's like it's very different from being on your own right and so when you leave that lovely cocoon of radio and you decide you're going to go off and and form your own voiceover company it's a it's a an eye-opening experience sometimes yeah I, and i get that all the time i i actually heard from the guy who was the engineer on my old talk show 35 years ago who doesn't look any different, but he sounds exactly the same. Uh, and he's like, well, how do I set up the studio? And I'm like, you what are you talking engineer? about? You're an engineer. <laughs> set up the studio. Take all that equipment that you brought home when you replaced it with new stuff at the station. You know how it never actually got recycled? Right. It ended up in your basement or in your shed. And just set up a studio for yourself. Right. right. That, yeah. That's essentially what I told him. Yeah. But he was like. start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. I always know who comes from radio immediately when they tell me their gear list. Mm. Yeah, always oh, absolutely. Know. It always yeah, includes just... an RE20 or an SM7B. Absolutely. <laughs> which we'll talk about and later. And it's a Metrics 520 AD. Ah, ah yes. Absolutely. I only had seven of those in my studio. <laughs> only seven. I, I did. I had seven mics around my... I have a, I, When I worked on CNET, which was... Oh, yeah. CNET. Uh, wow. You know, and we were on Sirius and XM in my condo in Burbank... I had a beautiful setup that CBS paid for that had seven stations. I could have a whole music group in my second bedroom if I wanted to. And every one of the mics wow. ran into a, a, you know, 520 AD. Yeah. yeah. And it was great. And it sounded awesome. So, yeah, they, you they can worked. always tell. Right. <laughs> that, that rack unit right now is being used as a bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's awesome. They're actually they're very good for that. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is David H. Lawrence, the 17th. We don't need to tell the story why you're the 17th. We've only told that about 100 times on this show. But I apologize in advance. I know. But it's a great story anyway. <laughs> it's a good story. Yeah. I, if anybody wants to know, ask in the chat room. Just send me an email, and yeah, I'll send yeah. you back the lovely five-paragraph-long explanation. <laughs> he has it on a hotkey on his keyboard. It's, it's, it's actually, no, it's text expander. It's text, a text expander. X-V-I-I story. That's what I type. You're not kidding. I'm not kidding. I am not. Oh, I'm going to tell you, text <laughs> yep. expander it's is, it's like, tool. the best productivity tool ever. Yeah, it is. Oh, my gosh. All my tech support I do with text expander expanded messages. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. Let me Google that up. for you. Yes. Yeah. Dot Look com. it up. It's always on Google. If, if you've got a question for David, throw it in the chat room as well. and Because uh, I'm sure he'd love to answer your questions. I would. That's all he does all day. You know, doesn't have time for acting or all this <laughs> stuff. He's just answering questions <laughs> all the time. Uh, one of the things that y y we we talked about earlier today was that you want to talk about 
How do you have a 45-year career? How do you have an extended career in this business? So I look at, if I was just starting, I'd, you know, my 45-year career would be, and when I was 107. And a lot of people do that. I've, if they, you know, their second act in life, they were a salesperson or they were a manager and they decided, you know, I have a really nice voice on the telephone. Right. <laughs> so, so how how what what's your, what's your formula for having uh, a good long career at this? I think absolutely you have to be adaptable. You have to be ready to accept when the world changes. I mean, I've seen the business. I, I started in the seventies, and I worked both in nightclubs and on the radio. And I've seen both of those businesses change a great deal in terms of who did what. Um, the idea that, uh, you know, I used to have three turntables and a mixer and a whole bunch of 12 inch vinyl. Uh, and now, you know, when I go to the golden state warriors games and I see DJ D D sharp playing with a box about this big and, you know, he just needs it to be that big so that he can go and, um, but you have to move around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, yeah, right here. Yeah. But your body is moving. Exactly. And, and you're moving the, the, the one fader in the middle. Cause you're like, you're, 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 you're like sneaking in stuff. It's just like everything changes in radio. I don't think there's a station left that does carts, carts, you know, or, or reel to reel tape or anything. But, um, you know, it's all automated now. Yeah. And and also categories of work. I mean, when I first started, there was no IVR. There was no audio books. There was no, you know, digital anything. It was reel to reel on a disc. Right. And yeah. the categories of work were, were uh, commercials, period. Right. right. Unless you were in Los Angeles, then you could have animation. But there were no video games. There were no... Like, and now, you know, I just, uh, again, uh, did a story on this the other day. A big category that's going to start happening over the years is for voiceover talent. And now's the time to get ready for it. And now's the time to understand the gear and the nomenclature and the way things are produced is smart speakers and voice assistants. Uh, oh, yeah. Alexa right. and Google Home and Siri and all that. Right now, the voices are automated. But if you use Alexa, do you use Alexa's uh, skills? Um, but occasionally, oh, we're yeah. learning yeah. a few. Every so now. some of them are actually voiced by real people, mm. and that whole space. Talk about creating your own content. I, I've got like a million ideas in my head about what to do with these things because currently the proliferation into the marketplace is like five or ten percent. Oh my gosh, the growth that's going to happen there. So I think to answer your original question, it's being open and aware of what's going on around you that's going to change over time and being willing to adjust what you've done and what you know that can make that possible to to take advantage of that. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, my first big job in IVR was for this little company called America Online. (laughs) You know, I mentioned them briefly on the air in Washington, D.C. when I was doing mornings. And at 10.02 when I got off the air... Steve Case was on the phone, and he's like, "I almost drove off the Dulles Toll Road when you t- when you said America Online. Did you do you want a free account?" And I'm like, "No, I already have a, an account. I don't, you know, because <laughs> it was something really brief. Like my screen name was I was working for Q107. I said my screen name was like David Q107. If you want to send me a message on America Online, my my program director's like, "What are you talking? About? <laughs> it's Mac only. Who cares? You know." So, but that started a 28 year relationship that had I not answered the phone that day. And, you know, he said, you know, we have, we have this thing where we want somebody to record these messages for us. Could you do that? And thank God I said, yes. Yeah. Not the, you've got mail though. No, uh, no, no. You've got mail was a, a really sweet guy by the name of Elwood Edwards. And Elwood was the general manager at channel 50 in Washington, DC. His wife was working at what was then called quantum computing you've got mail didn't start with america online yeah. you've got mail started with quantum which was a, a a company about four years earlier than aol that connected commodore 64s together oh. and they figured out they could download these very short little pieces four of them of audio that would play every so often when people would check their mail when they would download a file when they would show up on the service and when they would leave the service and that was it do you know? Here's a trivia, Corey. Okay. Do you know what the fifth prompt was for America Online? Because they added one more about 15 years into their existence. Goodbye. 
No. No. No, that was one of the original four. Uh, I'll give you a hint, and it's okay. something that's near and dear to your heart. Okay. Kodak. Uh, Kodak. Something to do with the picture, obviously. Mm. You've got pictures. You've got pictures. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, that was the fifth and final. They finally stopped because nobody cared anymore. Right, right. Yeah. right. And, and it's course. <laughs> and, and Kodak went out of business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Much to the chagrin of the people in Rochester. Exactly. Um, once again, our guest is David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Uh, not only is he a great actor and, and, and all the other great things he does, but he also teaches uh, with his company. Picture, obviously. What? Mm -hmm. You've got pic... You, you know, you've got pictures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, In case you missed it the first time, we're going to play back the entire show for you <laughs> 15 seconds after we that say it. That was entertaining. Yeah. Too. yeah. And yeah. that was probably my fault. Yeah. Uh, you, you have your company, VO2GoGo.com, which I you've do. been kind enough to be sponsoring our show. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I love your show. I think this is one of those things when people say, what should I listen to? What should I watch? What should I, how, you know, what, what? And usually it's included in the word in that sentence is, what, what's available for free that I can. Right. take advantage of and i go oh vo body shop vobs absolutely you know so yeah i love it yeah how many different things do you offer at vo to go go.com i mean you've got apps you've got all sorts of well stuff. yeah so what we have currently is we have um a full curriculum 36 classes uh we do demo production we do private coaching and we do uh workouts but the workouts are for people that take the classes uh, we're we're beta testing uh, a booth, a sound booth. Um, nothing spectacularly different about our sound booths than others, but it, at least I can control the quality on it, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that it's right. I, one of my coaches, Max Smart, it's actually his name. Uh, he uh, has done a really great job of of uh, helping me shape this, and we're achieving noise floors of like minus seventy five, minus eighty. Me. With the air turned on. Wow. So, yeah. That's, that's pretty excellent. Good. Yeah. That's really good. It's, yeah. it's good to know. That's not pretty good. That's damn impressive. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And you still you still have rehearsal app? Yeah, that's not part of VO to go go, no, but we certainly have Rehearsal yeah. Pro and then um you know, the other thing that I do is I act and I do voice work. And you somehow find time to do all of this. Yeah. How yeah. do you manage your time? So I think one of the biggest uh you know, sort of uh falsities of our business is that People who are successful are busy all the time, and they're fending off work. You know, I have a friend, Michael Kostroff, who has, does a great uh, uh, seminar called Audition Psych 101. You've taken take, it. I take it. It's awesome. Great seminar. You know, this guy works all the time. He's got a more button at the bottom of his IMDb page. And he has a more button on the second page. <laughs> right. So he's been around for a while. He does really great stuff. And everybody thinks, oh, how do you have time to do any of this stuff? Because I got him doing videos now. You know, he's doing one a week. And we, we're going to take his class and put it online. And that's going to be available soon. And people are like, how do you? You're always on television. How do you do Is he really always on television? Uh, no. You, uh, not always, you know? but you, you catch yeah. him all the time. And there are times when I feel like I'm a little, you know, overbooked. And then I have to remember, okay, there's only 24 hours in a day. And, um, you know, I pull back a little bit. But I think that people have a, a, a false impression of what kind of time professional people... I, I think that corporate executives are far more busy than, than I or anybody else who's working on a regular basis is, you know. I mean, you remember, I see the picture of Don LaFontaine over here. His big goal was to get done with his work every day by 11. Right. So he could be on the golf course by 12, right? So, you know, I mean, working smarter and working harder is better than working a lot. Quantity doesn't necessarily equal quality. So uh, I got plenty of time to do this. Right. You know? Well, it's good to know. Yeah. When, you, when you get really busy, what falls off the bottom? Actually, what happens is things get pushed back. You know, I've right. been, I've been talking about... Yeah. I've been talking about this package I've been developing for a while that for on-camera work, what I do for VO called Camera Ready You. And I've been working on it now for like three years. So uh, it was supposed to be out like two and a half years ago, but, you know, other things have happened. Yeah. Same thing with Rehearsal Pro. Um, you know, we're adding this community to Rehearsal Pro so that people who use it can offer their services as readers to other people oh, who cool. use it. Yeah. And that, too, I've been working on for years. It's a long and, tail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I, I don't... I don't usually let things fall off i just kind of push them back yeah right yeah 
Once again, we're talking with David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room right now, because we're going to get to those in just a couple of minutes. But right now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with David right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo 2 gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to gogos David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back. 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 Like the old days. Remember yeah. the echo we used to get? Yeah. I brought it back. All right. Thank you. It's, You're welcome. It's retro VOBS. Don't thank me. That's good. Uh, once again, we're talking with David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Got a question for him? Throw it in the chat room, because he doesn't just like answering questions from us. He wants to hear from you guys. Mm-hmm. So that's the really important thing here. Wait, I think the reason they're not asking questions is I don't look studious enough. There you go. <laughs> now he no, looks no, like a man who can right. answer questions. Okay. Yeah, I, I think one of the, the fascinating things about actors in Hollywood, because I, I've, I've had the chance to do a little bit of on-screen auditioning and being in the casting rooms and stuff like that, but I watch a lot of TV. Mm-hmm. All the streaming shows, my wife and I just binge watch them all the time. And I start to notice the same people playing similar roles and everything. Sure. But the people who are doing that, they're not the stars of the show. They're the guest stars. They've got to be the best actors because they've got to come up with a, a new character each time for like a couple of scenes in a show. And they're really the talented actors. Okay. You know, guys like you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Yes, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
you know, they're but they're coming up with types. Right. You know, it's like uh, creepy, evil, big, fat villain. There right. you go. Um, or or wacky, nutty neighbor frat boy that never grew up. Right. You know, there's there's certain brands, and you know, just like there are characters in every category. Um, you know, the idea that some people you see on television all the time, you have no idea what their name is. Right. Right. And then there are people whose name you might be familiar with, but you can't quite place their face. Yes. You know, there's a, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. But what was your question about that? Well, it's just... I mean, yes, Dan, we are awesome. Yes, I know. <laughs> but what does it take to really be an actor in Hollywood? Because I meet people all the time and they're like, I haven't worked in a couple of years. And, oh, you know, it's that's... Like, you know, I mean, to do this, mm -hmm. as I like to say, it's got to be in your gallbladder. You yeah. have to want to be an actor. You know, there's a and treatment for that. They have I, new drugs. That's good. That the FDA is currently <laughs> testing for that gallbladder <laughs> issue. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to know that this has got to be something you can't help but do. Right. Because there's an extraordinarily good chance that you will never get a chance to do it on television or in film. You'll get a chance to do it in some dinky black box theater in North Hollywood where you're like trying to avoid the cockroaches. No offense to black, you know, black box theaters in North Hollywood, but you know, you could call Orkin. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you 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 might be making your. I mean, now it's it's really easy. You don't need somebody else's permission. You can create your own web series. That's right. Like, like VO Body Shop. Yeah. Um, but you know, you can you can do scripted stuff too, and you can do funny stuff, and you could. I have a friend who's got uh, a a show that she created, and it just won a Webby Award, and it's like, well. You know, 10 years ago when they started, what did that mean? But today, it's really a big deal. Casting directors look at this and go, wait a minute. She's written and produced something that won a Webby Award? Huh. Well, that's good to know. You know, or, know or when somebody cachet. has, when somebody has uh, um, you know, a lot of following on social media, you know, that, that, that helps. But, you know, you have to just have a joy for it and a love for it. And, you know, the civilians... The civilians are always, it's hard to talk with civilians about this because they're like, so how long are you going to do this before you realize it's just not working? You know, it seems to take a while with some people. Pretty much forever. I mean, you know, and, you know, there are people that, uh, you know, do it as a second act in life. You know, I didn't get the part that I'm best known for uh, and the part that I was on television for three years on the same show with until I was 50. 50. You know, and so that kind of blows out of water the whole thing about there are no parts for anybody over the age of 25. Right. Which is what they often will say. Um, well, leading roles anyway. Well, I mean, mine wasn't, this is mint is very good, Dan. Thank you. I'm, you're welcome. Um, you know, I was in a guest leading role. I wasn't in a, a, a series lead role, but I was regularly on the show. And so... That same thing that you talked about where you see these people all the time, you'll notice that the same people that are in series as regulars end up being regulars in other shows as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Right? Right. So, um, you know, casting people and producers and so on, they want to go with known quantities. Right. They want to go with people that they can trust on set that have not proven themselves to delay the production of things because time is money. They're not hanging out at the crafts table, you know, hitting up the... The, the team at the crafts table for a date. So, you know, there are people that have proven themselves. And if you've ever been in front of a television or in a movie theater and you've said, how in the world did that person get that job? I could do that better than that person. I'll tell you how they got that job. They know how to get things done. They know how to do it. They may not be the best actors in the world. I mean, we all know actors that nobody's ever seen before, but they're amazing. And we all know people that you know, kind of suck, but they're on television all the time because they get the job done and they do it in a serviceable way. You know, there's a phrase that there, you, you know, it's not the best actor that gets the job. Right. It's the right actor that gets the job. And the right actor is a phrase that could mean any number of different things. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so they, they're there to serve the people who they're working for. They're there to serve the story. Right. And the money that is generated by that story. And if you don't believe that, you shouldn't go, try to be a professional actor. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
Once again, we're talking with David H. Lawrence. Again, if you got a question for him, throw it in the chat room because we'd like to hear from you as well. And that also applies to video games. It applies to oh, audiobooks. Absolutely. I mean, to bring it back to voiceover, if you wonder why, you know, some people get tons of tons of audiobooks, it's because they can get in and out of the, the studio and get the job done faster without, you know, they, that means they can bring another book in sooner at the studios that have lots of different spaces in them. So... It's a, it's a good skill to have. Sorry yeah. for interrupting. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. But I, nothing is more thrilling to me than when I'm watching some of these series. And say I see a guy who's working in the morgue pushing a cart down the hall in the basement of a hospital. Like, hey, there's David H. Lawrence, 17th. Love that. Or when I see Scott Parkin do it or Kiff Vandenhoofel. It's like, they, they're great guys. You guys are all great. And it's just so wonderful. I'm like, hey, I, he's working. I love that, too. <laughs> So much so that it drives my girlfriend absolutely up the wall. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, look, Cliff got work. And she's like, who's Cliff? Right. right. Oh, that's the guy standing right there. Next. He's the he's the assistant MD, you know. But, and it's like, yeah. or, or I'll see a commercial come on. <laughs> right. And somebody that I worked with on a web series is in the commercial. Oh, that's the guy that I worked that Subway web series for. I don't care. I just want to watch the show. Okay? Right. I know. Yeah, it drives it drives her Watching a little Watching movies little, and TV with anybody that's worked in the business. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty it's much a torture. Tough thing to do, we especially apologize. if you're if you're a civilian. It's it's like, yeah, you know, when I when I got booked on this Disney show and I and I said to Betsy, you she she was in San Francisco at the time. You want to fly down here for the taping? It's a sitcom. Right. So I was like, yeah, that would be awesome, she said. <laughs> and then when she got here and it was eight hours in the studio at like 52 degrees in the studio and she was bundled up with her coat, my manager's coat, my coat, and she was miserable. Right. She's like, I will never, ever do this again, <laughs> ever. Me, I'm having the greatest time right. in my life because I'm booked on a show. Yeah. It, it could be 20 degrees in there and it's like, we're going to do a beach scene. Okay, sure. <laughs> Who cares? But man, it was hard on her. It was really hard, and, it, and you know, it's hard to be a civilian in this business. I, well, absolutely. You know, trying to get the the spouse to, or, or partner to get involved is like you know, that's really that's tough. your thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but every so often, when when something really cool happens, she'll say, "Well, maybe I should do commercials." And then I remind her of those eight hours at right. fifty two degrees, and she's right. like, "Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll just stick with high end corporate consulting." Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Let's I'll, talk a little bit about tech for a second. Yeah. What do you say? Absolutely. Sounds good. What do you? Yeah. So we talked a little bit about the gear you had mm -hmm. back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And what is your daily driver equipment these days? You know, you guys are gonna hate me because no, you. No, we we already look, do. This right? is, <laughs> this is the this is the same argument that George and I would have every time SAG would book us to come in and talk about equipment. He'd go first, and he would talk about all these lovely mics and processors and consoles and you know sound equipment. And I'm you know, and then I would come on and I would say that's all bullcrap. What you need is an AT2020 USB Plus. That's it. Start with that. The only thing that's changed since then is, is the, the plus. Of the plus. Exactly. <laughs> Which, by the way, is a significant improvement. Yeah. Yeah. It's a much improved version of the old one. Yeah. yeah. It's clear and and I, I use it all the time. Yeah. And people are like, what? Yeah. I mean, I have this lovely little oak box sitting on my shelf that has a little gold latch on it. And you open up that box and inside is this microphone called a Neumann U87. Mm -hmm. And it's balanced, and it's been uh, refurbished twice, because I've had it for about 20 years. And every, you know, it's one of these mics that after a while, the dust gets at the driver, and you gotta, you gotta take it to the mic or send it in. Right. Um, it's in the box because I don't wanna have to send it in even though I haven't used it. So it's in the box, I don't use it because I don't need it, you know? Yeah. What I do, requires a certain level of of gear i don't i i mean i i have a i have a sennheiser i have a shotgun for doing video work i rarely use it um you know i don't i don't spend a lot of i mean my computer is a macbook not a macbook pro not a macbook air a macbook because a macbook has no fan right and right. so in the yeah. middle of long form narration i don't have to worry about the fact what is that noise that I'm hearing? 
oh, it's the fan from the computer. When did that start? So when you're done, you have yeah. to go back and find where the fan noise started. And then if you do any noise reduction, it's going to change how that section sounds. Yep. And so I don't have to worry about that. And the MacBook is the cheapest of the MacBook line. The MacBook, the plain MacBook. Yeah. So, I, you know, I use Audacity. I use the AT2020. Um, so you for, practice what you preach. Absolutely. I, I, I eat my own dog food. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no doubt about but it. It's really good dog it's food. It's really good dog food. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, one time you were using a headset mic. Weren't you experimenting with that for narration? Not for narration. I was using no, it for audiobooks. For, no, not for audiobooks. I, w I used it when I was on the air. Yeah, because yeah. I had like six screens around me, like you do. Yeah, like yeah. I had my 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 radio automation stuff, and yeah. I had my my uh, uh, my console was was yeah. you know so like yeah around. exactly. And it's hard to be on mic. Yeah, and so I didn't want to be playing the mic like this. You know, yeah. I watch Howard like Stern doing, do it all the time. I'm trying to do it right now. Yeah, exactly. Over here and yeah, he's always grabbing it and like turning yeah. his head and stuff. And it's like, it. I hate being like Howard Stern. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So anyway, that's 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 what I use. I don't, you know, well, I mean. But it's good that you're teaching people to keep it simple, which is what absolutely. we try to teach people. Absolutely. I mean, there's lots of shiny things out there, but. Oh, my God. Better. And you make the mistake of thinking that throwing money at a problem is going to solve it. Right. You, th you make the mistake of thinking the reason I'm not successful as a voiceover talent is I don't have good enough equipment. You know what? If Joe Cipriano wants to use a crappy mic, he's going to sound great. Because he's Joe Cipriano. Because he's Joe Cipriano, and he concentrates on the storytelling, right. not the equipment. Right. right. So, well, exactly. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is it's not the equipment that gets you the work. Right. It's how good an actor you are. we got a couple of questions from you do. our amazing audience. Get out of here. They heated do. the call. Yes. We have one from Paula Lineweber. Paula Lineweber. Hey, yes. Paula. George, go ahead. Oh. Hi, hey, question for David. Of all the different genres or categories you do, which is your favorite and why? Uh, well, for the longest time, my favorite was IVR because I made the most money at it, and it yeah. was like this kind of hidden gem. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, when I first got back in the union in the early 2000s, I was like, why are you only charging X for IVR when I'm making 40X for IVR because of the way I charge? And they looked at me like a dog listening to a, a whistle. Um, I'm like, yeah, you're leaving all this money on the table. I'm making this, and you're only, you know, union rates are only this. You know, I, I was in a very unique position, and it's easy work. I mean, literally, you 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 voice it, and then you give it to your client. You know, there's, it's, you know, once you're into the process of it. But now, I really love audiobooks. You know, I'm talking about off camera, you know, just on right. mic, on mic voiceover right, right. stuff. Um, I really love audiobooks. I feel like I learn so much, and they're so centering, and I feel like I'm creating a legacy for my kids, my family. Um, you know, at one point, I, I I went to my daughter's graduation. I have two two daughters. I went to my younger one's graduation from uh, University of Central Florida. My older one was there, and my older says to me, just like ma very matter of fact, she goes, hey, did I tell you I did an audiobook? It's, I think it's coming out next week. And I'm like, what? You did what? <laughs> You've been keeping from this. And so I go, I go to the hotel that night. It's not coming out next week. It came out last week, and I'm listening to it and I'm crying. Yeah, I bet yeah. she is. And I'm like, and this is the one that I, for those of you that are watching my daily videos, I just did a video <laughs> that came out last weekend. My daughter's a session singer in Nashville. Oh wow, she's amazing. She's been on America's Got Talent. She's been on The Voice. She's been on American Idol. Right up to the point where she goes to Hollywood. Yeah. And the reason she doesn't get that far is she doesn't have a sob story to tell. Right. She grew up kind of happy yeah. in an upper middle class family. Yeah. Nobody's got cancer that she's going to cure by her singing. Right. You know, I'm not a woman trapped in a man's body. And the only thing that makes me happy is when my daughter sings me some share song. You know, whatever the story is that gets you on the show. Drama to exactly. Get on the damn show. Exactly. So <laughs> she does this book and I'm listening to it and I'm like, Oh my God! And I had given her my mic. She uses the AT twenty twenty USB plus. I'd given her access to all the classes, and totally without me knowing, she's now got eight books. That's so for cool. big publishers like Harper <laughs> Collins and and like what? Is, wait, wait, what? That's so great. So yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. audiobooks, it's storytelling, and if you love oh being a storyteller, yeah. you can't you can't beat that. Yeah, especially when somebody else is writing it. Yeah, you can see her <laughs> singing an Adele song. If you go to viotogogo.com and look for look for that video where she she's she's just amazing. Anyway, oh, yes. 
question from Blair Siebert. Blair Siebert. Yes. See you at the at the meetup on Thursday. Yes. I'll, you'll see me. I'll be there. Awesome. Right. I'll see you there, Dan. Right, we'll be there. We'll see you there, Blair. All of Bye-bye. Hollywood comes to the same point. Exactly. Uh, David, I came in late today, so if you haven't answered this, you made this amazing commitment to Daily Video, which you were talking about earlier. What has surprised you and delighted you about that effort? Oh, I'm so sorry. We did answer that earlier. Uh, <laughs> good night, everybody. Bye. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> No, uh, what surprised and delighted me about this is all the stuff that I'm learning on the side. Like, how it's, like, honed and refined. Like, here's the thing. I'm going in for shoulder surgery next Tuesday. And so I'm going to be down for a good week, week and a half, two weeks. Who knows? So I'm trying to get ahead in the videos. Um, And I've... And I and I yesterday I did seven videos in one day, and the only reason I didn't do more is because for a five minute video, it takes my MacBook about an hour to export <laughs> the nineteen you know the ten eighty p file and then upload it to YouTube, yeah. and then I can get you know uh, my my video editor back and I can do another one. Otherwise, I'd be cranking them out like crazy, and I couldn't do that at the beginning of the year. Because I was still thinking, you know, how do I do this? What's like I, I've I've been on the show probably half dozen times, maybe. Yeah. Every time I come here, there's something new and different before they were over there and they had a thing over here and they had a guy over there and you know, it, it you know, things change over time. And what I've found is I've been able to hone and refine what I'm doing and I've learned an awful lot about the subject matter that I've been talking about, mostly about productivity and about the business and you know I'm about to rant and rave about this Apple uh, Supreme Court ruling because you guys should be careful what you wish for you really should if you don't think Apple's protecting you from jerks out there who want to hack into your iPhone by having their own silo okay I'm off on a tangent mm-hmm. so <laughs> I've learned tons of stuff about what I'm doing and tons of stuff about content creation YouTube uh you know video editing being agile and ready to go when the muse strikes, it's been amazing. It's been so great. So, fabulous. Well, David, it's always a pleasure. Would thank you, you. Join us here. Okay. Thank you for sponsoring our show. My and, pleasure. Uh, and continued success and good luck on the shoulder surgery. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You should get to be on drugs for a couple of days. I am going to be on. <laughs> I'm going to be on a pain pump, and that sounds Ooh, awesome. That sounds pretty intense, man. Yeah. Is it Bluetooth controlled? I believe so. <laughs> I they believe got an app screwed. for that. They do. They do. <laughs> anyway, if people want to get a hold of you, of course, they go to? VO2Gogo.com. That's VO, the numeral 2, Gogo.com. And I'm going to tell you something that I haven't told anybody yet. That's right. That's all going to go away in about four months. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Because I have to have this conversation. Whenever I tell people my URL, right. I have to say, it's VO, the numeral two, go, go, dot, two goes, not VO, two, go, but VO, two, go, go. Well, that's going to change. And same great stuff, but a new brand. New branding. Yeah. All right. Okay. David H. Lawrence, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody, this is the time of the show where we get to thank our wonderful sponsor, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, which is the premium way to connect your studio to other studios around the world with low latency and sample rate lock sync. Everything you send and stream over Source Connect will absolutely reach the other studio at the same time every time with no shifts in latency or anything weird going on with time stretching and things like this. This is an issue that happens with a lot of the other systems that work on web browsers. Source Connect is its own standalone application. It's rock solid. It's proven. And again, it's going to be requested by the top studios around the world. So if you want to play at that level and be ready to work with those big jo- uh, big jobs that are using these studios, have Source Connect in your arsenal. Go get a 15-day free trial at source-elements.com. Get your iLock going. Get everything ready to go. And then when that session comes in, you can say, I've got Source Connect. You can buy your license, activate it, and you're ready to go. Tell them we sent you, and we appreciate the support from Source Elements. We'll see you back here in just a second.
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hey everybody, it's time to talk about our great friend Harlan Hogan and his fabulous website, voiceoveressentials.com. And Harlan wanted me to tell you that this month he's got a great feature going on on voiceoveressentials.com. He's going to be answering a question a week about voiceover. Whether he gives you the right answer or not is a whole other deal. But it's going to be followed by a review entitled, Crap I Bought on the Internet. And he's starting off with an item which is a shotgun, a shotgun mic mount for two dollars and sixty cents for free delivery. Okay, that's interesting. And then in June, Harlan will present his annual top ten recorded on the road tips. Like if you're in a hotel, go out in the hallway and unplug the Coke machine. Anyway, Harlan knows more about voiceover than just about anybody, and he has more stuff made for voiceover than anybody in the business. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com where you'll find great stuff like the Harlan Hogan V01A voice-optimized mic for voiceover. It's the only microphone really made for voiceover, designed by Harlan Hogan himself, and you can get it there and at a great price. It's at a great price point. The best place to go to go to voiceoveressentials.com is to go to the bottom of our homepage. Find the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his Portabooth Pro. Click on it. It will take you there. It'll let him know that you saw this message on VoiceOver Body Shop, and he'll be thrilled to tears. Anyway, go to voiceoveressentials.com to get all your voiceover stuff. Thanks for being our sponsor for eight years, Harlan. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we are back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, next week, you know, we do Tech Talk, but next week we have Memorial Day. You guys want to be eating hot dogs? Well, maybe not you, but... Uh, <laughs> There's a pretty good vegan hot dog, I have to admit. Yeah. Yeah, you know Field Roast? Look it up. It's pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, we're taking Memorial Day off, which means we'll be off for a couple of weeks. And and then I'm going to Alaska in June. But on June 10th, Lori Allen will be here, who's always a riot. Oh, yeah. Because she loves holding my dogs. <laughs> and she's a, she is an animal lover extraordinary. Hey, she is. She and is. super talented and yeah. funny. And uh, she'll be fun, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We've got on the list here Debbie Irwin, Brian Rausch, Joseph Harrison, Christy Burns, Gary. Gary. Gary he just said Gary. Yeah, I like the name Gary. All right. Uh, I got a cousin named Gary. Don Griffith. <laughs> Uncle Roy at Antland Productions. Those are our, our freshest donors, and we thank you very much. The, most of those are subscribers. They, they're and, doing it on an auto donation basis. Right. And if you want to donate to the show, there's a donate button right here on our homepage. So just click on the button, one that says donate. You can do a buck. You can do a buck a month. You, you can, can do, do it or, you can, we'll Do a hundred. We'll, whatever amount you're willing to send. It helps us keep this show technically amazing. All right. By the way, show us your booth. Somebody actually sent in a booth this week. This this week it's this Darren is Sapp. a legit yeah. voiceover booth. Yeah, as it's, you can tell, clothes make great sound absorption they material. Do. And, they do. Uh, and and closets, we, know, we now know what he wears, uh, but how he's set up. <laughs> uh, the mic could be in a better position, but you know, but it. There we go. Yeah, see, so he's he's got the mic upright. What is he using there? What is anyway? that? Oh my gosh, I think that's an Audio Technica ATR 2100. 
Ah. Which is a great podcasting mic. Right. So, so if you're learning voice, he says it's a newbie boot. So he's learning. Okay. No, I mean, move up. he made a minimal investment. He's recording in a closet. And if he's got his mic placement dialed in, I bet he's getting some pretty decent audio out of that spot. Cool. So, so if you want your booth on here, any booth is any booth is cool. If as long as it, it works. doesn't have to be crazy, we love showing like a. This is what real voice actor booths often look like, right? And people make money in a closet like this. It some, happens. Some people making good money in yeah. closets like this. Just remember, people don't need to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> it's only what it sounds like. Okay. After you eat it. <laughs> Okay. Think Sorry. about that one for a second. <sighs> uh, you must be hungry. I know. Uh, if you need help with your home studio, you want to help from George, they go to? GeorgeTheTech.com. And then you can also visit Dan for a different flavor of sausage over here. Home studio. I'm not going anywhere with that. HomeVoiceOverStudio.com <laughs> is the place you can What's find What's in the me. coffee? <laughs> Just coffee. Okay. Trust me. Uh, hey, if you want to be in our audience, we're on opposite mondays mm -hmm. write to us and uh you can be in the audience here with us put audience in the subject line wait a minute how did oh that's right he came back <laughs> <laughs> i love how we did that on this show I it's know. just magic that's right so if you want to be in the audience write to us at the guys at vobs.tv if you're here in los angeles or going to be in the greater los angeles area uh write to us tell us when you want to come and we'll give you the secret handshake and let you through the gate Maybe. Okay, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO2, that's the numeral 2, go go. go. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com and, and. J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. Just did a demo with J. Michael, an announcer demo, going against the grain. <laughs> that's going to be great. Can't wait. It, it sounds fabulous. I'm, I'm never happy with my demos. I like this one. It was really good. Oh, good. Uh, we need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan, who will be back eventually. we got to get a hold of her again. Mike Merlino, Sue's son in the chat room. And Thanks, man. his mom, our we director, Sue Merlino, for doing a great job right tonight. There. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, again, we'll be back on... Well, Tech Talk, we have Tech Talk this week, and then we'll be back June on June 10th, 10th with Laurie Allen. Yeah. So uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. Not an easy business, guys. You need help with your home studio? Tune into our show because we know what it's supposed to sound like. Because when it sounds good, whistle. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Have a great week, everybody.